Hello and welcome. Today we are going to talk about React Context API and how we can use it in order to store some data and functionalities that will be consumed by various components. Here is a demo project. It will be a simple to-do application that will allow users to add to-do items and to remove them. I will start from the app.js component and I will replace the regular function with the arrow function. It is just my personal preference, so you don't have to do it. And I will just replace the JS extension with the JSX and that's another personal preference. Now let's start the app with the npm run start command. And this is the starting template that we have. And let's add some components for our to-do application. The first one will be to-do list. And it will return an ordered list with list item elements. and I will export this component by default. Now we can add an array of to-do items above the template, which can be used for iterating through the to-do list template, but since we want to make other components that will consume to-do items as well, I will place that data inside the context. I will create a context provider component, which will be called to-do provider. I will create a context and it will be named to-do context and I will use create context method from React. Now I will create a to-do provider component, which should return provider from this context. It will be a provider for children components and let's also pass children as a property for to-do provider component and don't forget to export to-do provider as a default. Now I will pass the value property to to-do context provider so the children elements, actually the children components will be subscribed to that value and it will be updated on any change inside the provider's value. Now I will create to-do list state, which will be an array of one item. So the first to-do item can be to learn React Context API. And I can actually move this initial state value outside of the to-do provider. I will create a variable initial to-do list state and I will use just this uh, array as a value. So now I can pass it as a default state. Now I will create the new context value object which we will pass as a value property of the to-do context provider. It will contain to-do list state which will, in this case, be available for all children components. So children components will be able to access this to-do list array. One of the things that can be particularly handy will be to create a custom hook out of the use context react hook. I will import use context hook from react and pass to do context. And now we can just use use to do context hook inside a component and to do list will be available. The result will be an object that we pass to provider as a value property. And inside the object we will have to do list property. And now we can use it to iterate through the array and display items in the template.
the key property will have a value of index and inside the li element I will just display to do item value which is a string. Now let's remove some parts of the app.js component that we are not going to need and we can add h1 element instead and display the application name for example. Maybe we can also remove some of the class names but let's first check in the browser how it looks. So the header element is absolutely centered and I would like to change that. Let's see if we remove this class name. Okay, so now we removed almost everything. Let's check in the CSS file. Uh, I would like to use this background color for the body. And for the text, I will use just white color. Yeah, great. I, I wanted to achieve something like this. And let's add to do provider and to do list component as a child component. And our to do list is displayed. So Context providers are maybe not that useful if we have a single component, just like in this case, but if we have many components that should consume data from one source, or if we want to avoid prop drilling, it is very useful and it can improve your code. Now let's add another component, which will be a to-do form, where the user will be able to add new to-do items. So inside the template we will have the form element and input with a type text inside. And we will have the submit button of course, so the user will be able to submit the form. And I will make this component to be a default export for this module. Now let's say that we want to display the number of to-do items somewhere in the form. I will create a heading element and I will import use to-do context so I will have the access to to-do list array. And I will display the number by using the land property. Now let's add to do form into the app.js component and I will add it as a child component of to do provider. Now these two components use the same state and we don't need to pass props in order to achieve that, which is pretty cool. So regarding displaying the number of to do items, it is easy to achieve it with the length property but in case of some complex logic behind that, we might want to create a separate method which we can also add into the context value object. So for the demo purpose, I will create a method called get number of to do items and it will be a function that will just return the length of to do list array. I will add it as the property of the context value and it will be available for, for the children components of the provider. And now we can use get number of to do items instead of to do list length. Now I will create a new state where I will store the value of the input field and I will call it to do items and there will be a method set to do item. The default value will be an empty string and I have an error which says that I need to import use state. And now it's fixed. And on every input change I would like to update the value of to do item state by using set to do item and setting the new value to the target dot value property. And the value property should be equal to to do item. And when the form is submitted, I will call handle on submit method, which I'm going to create right now.
and I will place the console log inside to test that the form is submitted and that the to do item state is changed. Now let's open the browser's console and let's add another to do item. Let's say that we want to learn Angular and when I press submit I will need to prevent default behavior so I will access the event object and call the prevent default method and now when we add a to-do item and when we press submit the new item should be displayed in the console now when the form is submitted I would like to update the data inside to-do provider so the to-do list array will be updated with the newly created to-do item. I will create a method for that and the name will be add to-do and it will have new to-do item as a parameter and it should call set to-do list. I will pass a new array as an argument where I will spread everything that is inside to-do list and at the end of the array I will add new to-do item. Now we can add the method into the context value and it will be available for the children components. So to-do form is one of the children components and I will use add to-do here when the form is submitted and the method should come from use to-do context hook. To do item will be an argument for this method and when the method is executed I would like to reset the value of to do item so I will set it to an empty string which was a default value. Now let's check in the browser to see how it works. If I type a new to do item and press submit it will be added into the list and the number of to do items will be updated. And we also have a bug, if I continue clicking on the submit button, the number of to-do items will be increased. So in order to fix this bug, I will check for the value of to-do item, and if there is no value, I will just uh, place return, which will exit the method. Now when the input field is empty, and when I press submit button, nothing will happen. Now I will add another functionality into to-do list component and that will be to remove the to-do item because eventually we will complete some of the tasks from this to-do list. I will add another method similar to the add to-do method here and it will be called remove to-do. So it will have to-do index as a parameter which will be the index of the item that we want to delete. And I will use filter method to iterate through the to-do list and I will return all the items except the one with this particular to-do index and that will create a new array which will be stored into new list variable. Now we can call set to-do list with the new list as an argument and we can also include remove to do into the context value. Now let's go back to to do list component and when the user clicks on the X button we will call remove to do from the to do context and we will pass the index of this to do item. And let's import the method from the context value. And now we can see in the browser how it works. I will first add some new items. And when I click on the X button, the item should be removed and the number of to do items should be updated. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you like it and it was helpful to you. Subscribe to my channel and share this video if you think that it can be useful for someone.